everyone. Today we are going to learn another new topic, which is government expenditure. For part one, we are going to learn government budget constraint, and we are going to modify household budget constraint with the presence of government. And finally, we are going to learn the impact of government's existence on household income. For this part, you need to read chapter twelve from our textbook. First, we look at government budget constraint. What are the components? Government is like household. It has to manage its income flow, which is government revenue flow, and also manage how it's going to spend it, which is the expenditure flow. For revenue flow, government has three、uh, sources of revenue. One is household, and the other is treasury, and another is central bank. In each period, government can、uh, tax household, take away its purchasing power of tea baskets of、uh, commodity from them. At the same time, government can require、uh, treasury to borrow from the public, printing new、uh, government bond to borrow from the public. We use notation B superscript G to represent government bond. Delta means the new issuance of government bonds in this period. And at the same time, government can have central bank to print money for it to use. This newly printed money, we use the notation delta m to represent it. So all three together, we will have the government's revenue come from taxing households purchasing power of tea basket of goods, which means that take away the tax、uh, income from the household of p times capital T. Since each basket costs p units of dollars, at the same time, government borrow from the public of delta b g dollars. At the same time, central bank also print delta n unit of new money for government to spend. All three components sum together define government's revenue. Then, for the expenditure part, government expenditure can uh, be uh, determined by Its expenditure to two different agents in the household. They are household and firm. And、uh, for the household part, government sometimes transfer certain purchasing power of the basket, the basket of goods, back to the household. And at the same time, since government has borrowed from the public before, when government borrow, government also has to pay interest for its borrowing. So therefore, with a BG unit of borrowing, he has to pay I times BG amount of interest back to the public, which means households. And then, with the rest part of the revenue, government would use it for government purchase. Government can buy goods from producers. So if government is buying G baskets of goods from firms. It means that government is going to spend p times g amounts of money in order to buy those baskets for it to use. So、uh, all three components together for the transfer of purchasing power v, it is called transfer payment. So p times v would be its monetary transfer payment back to the household, and the i times b g part is called its interest payment to the public. And then for the first purchasing part, it is called government purchase. So government purchase amount would be、uh, p times g dollars. All three components sum together would define government expenditure. So that's why we will have the government revenue look like those three components we sum together should be equal to the government expenditure that is defined by the sum of those three components on the right. Then the equality would define government budget constraint. Now we are going to put a、um, subscript for the time frame for government budget constraint. But before we do that, we look at this、uh, new printing money on the budget constraint of the government. Normally, central bank is independent; it does not serve government's expansion need. So government cannot ask central bank to print money for its to use. Therefore,、uh, we will assume that the issuance of money for government to use is equal to zero. Then we can drop it out of the government budget constraint. 
And now we are ready to put down time subscript for this budget constraint. In this constraint, the interest of payment, if we use one to represent a day, and the interest payment is a payment for the debt that got accumulated up to yesterday. Therefore, we should put down subscript zero for that uh, component. And then for the delta BG part, it is the new debt insurance today. So it's today's decision. So we put down subscript one to represent it is today's decision. This will give us the Garmin debt accumulation equation. The end of today's uh, Garmin uh, debt, BG1, is equal to yesterday's balance, BG0, plus the new issuance of debt today, delta BG1. And for the rest of the component T, V, and G, they are all today's decision, so we put down subscript 1. This would give us the government budget constraint as what we see now. Now we are going to modify household budget constraint when government exists. Remember in the past the household's uh, uh, budget constraint uh, come from the income flow equal to its expenditure. And the income flow comes from three parts. Uh, they are the labor income, the capital rental income, and the interest payment from private bond. But now with the government, there will be two extra sources of income. The first part is the transfer payment that government is going to give back to the household, which is P times B. And the fifth one would be the interest payment from the government due to the household's owning of government bond. And for the expenditure part, that household used to have uh, three categories of expenditure. One is for consumption, the other is for capital investment, and, and the third part would be the purchase of a uh, private bond. But now with the existence of government, that household is going to spend P times T amount of money for paying his tax. At the same time, when government issue new debts, Delta BG, would be the purchase of a household that is going to uh, purchase government's uh, debt. So with this, the, this existence of government, the household budget constraint is going to have four more components. And then when we sum those uh, components on the left together, we got the income flow for household's budget constraint. And we sum those five components on the right, we get the expenditure flow of household budget constraint. Now we put down time subgroup for um, both parts, both sides. Then on the budget constraint with the time subgroup, there are three components that have subgroup zero, which means it's decided from yesterday's decision. First is the capital stock, it is from yesterday's decision. And the second is your uh, the holding of a bond balance, so it's also from yesterday's decision. Now we are going to look at uh, an insightful household who is fully aware of government budget constraint. This will impact his thinking of his budget constraint. So if we look at the household budget constraint with government, this is what we see and we learned from before. And in this constraint, those on the top flow, they are the component that we learned from the past without government. With government, we have four extra components that uh, he's going to receive income, PV, and uh, plus interest payment, IBG, from government. And he has to spend PT, for the tax and the buying the government new insurance debt delta BG from the government. So that if he is fully aware of government budget constraint, he know that in each period, the following equality should hold. So if we flip the equality uh, from left to right, we will know that for house of budget constraint, PT plus delta BG is going to be equal to PV plus IBG plus an extra component which is government purchase. 
so that household know that um, the left hand side PV and IBG can be cancelled by the right hand side PV and IBG. Therefore, if the household uh, cancel both terms out on its budget constraint, the household will know that actually he is facing a budget constraint that is defined by the O1 plus PG as an extra item on its expenditure, expenditure flow. So WL plus RK plus IB is the income flow the same, exactly the same as before. It is equal to those expenditure part that is the same as before, plus only extra component that's come from government purchase. This is due to government existence. This is the only essential change on government budget constraint if the household is in cycle of government budget constraint. And then we can also move the P times G government purchase to the left hand side. Then actually we come to this new budget constraint that an insightful household would consider. As you can see that the existence of a government simply means there will be a decrease in income. So in the future, whenever we analyze the impact of government purchase, we always have to consider its income effect on household. And uh, whether a government is able to uh, affect output, it will depend on its income effect, but also depend on whether government is able to spend wisely. If government spend wisely, then this purchase might benefit the economy so as to increase household income somewhere. But before we consider this the second point, we have to think about the scenario that government always has the purchase that come from household's pocket. So there would be always a decrease in income.